Next, let's try to do something with that data that we get back. We've created an RDD from a Cassandra query, and that RDD has Cassandra row records in it. They're objects of this type, Cassandra row. Let's see what we might do with that. Let's peel back the onion a little bit and check out that API. Our challenge here has two parts to it. First, I want to find all of the movies with the word pirate in their titles. Second, I want to find all of the movies with genre adventure and a rating of 7.5 or higher. Now, we are constraining this to the Johnny Depp universe of discourse, so that is kind of a precondition. That's the RDD that we're dealing with to start. But those are the two things I want to do with that RDD. Also, we've got specific requirements for how to format the output. I don't just want to two-string the Cassandra row object and take what I get. I want to do a little bit of formatting myself. To do this, we have to know a little bit more about the Cassandra row API. Let's take a look. Now, we're going to be converting Cassandra rows and Cassandra columns, that's actual data in a Cassandra row, into native Scala types. To do that, we have to take a look at the mapping of Cassandra data types into Scala data types. This slide gives you the key. It's a pretty tall slide. I'll have to scroll a little bit because there's a lot of data types to look at. But text maps to string, big int to long, counter is a long, a double is mysteriously a double. So not all of these are all that crazy. Int is an int. Time UUID maps onto a Java util UUID. So sometimes the JVM abstraction or the JDK abstraction sort of leaks up into the API here. But really none of these is all that amazing or all that confusing. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward mapping. Now let's, let's put these to use. Now the first method we want to learn on Cassandra Row is the getter. This is kind of an all-purpose workhorse. This lets us grab a particular column by name and pull it out according to its data type and deal with that thing. Pull it into a val in, in Scala and do things with it. So taking a look at the definition here, we have the get type method. And type there is going to be the actual name of a data type, as you see, like string, or a set of ints, or uh, a long, or something like that. And the column is a string that is the Cassandra column name that we're fetching. Alternatively, we could use the second syntax, which is just the get method, but specifying the return type of the method in square brackets. So I could say get string and then the column type. I'm always calling the method get, but I'm specifying the return type in brackets. The bummer here is that if the column doesn't exist, you'll get a null pointer exception, and nobody really likes those. So we've got a slightly improved version of the API if that might be the case. That's get type option. So I could say get string option and title would be the column name, or get float option rating, and that will wrap the return value in an option object, which lets me use that nice API and call like is defined and get and get or else, and do all the things I can do with option, rather than suffering that null pointer exception. The second version of that, which is uh, similar to the, the second version of the get syntax, I'm just explicitly wrapping the type in option. So I would say get option string using that second syntax if I preferred. Uh, both of those do the same thing. So with just that little bit of information, that gives us enough to be able to answer our challenge. Remember, we wanted to see all the movies with the word pirate in their title. And to do that, let's take a look at some code. That was, that was our first challenge. We are going to operate on the movies RDD. You see there on line one of the, of the solution. That's an RDD that we created to start with. And we're going to filter it. We're going to filter it. And for each row, we're going to get the title as a string and lowercase that and see if it contains the word pirate in lowercase. That's filtering all of the Johnny Depp movies to, to create a new RDD containing only those films that have the word pirate in them. On the second line, we map that. And really all map is doing there is converting it into the string of the format that we said we wanted to have. We take a row and then we pull out the title, the release year, the rating, which we did a nice get or else call you see there on that fourth line uh, to deal with, with unrated movies. Then we take that mapped collection, collect it, and for each it, passing in print line, and we get that nice output you see at the bottom that is our properly formatted report, which is all of the movies by Johnny Depp with the word pirate in the title. And problem number two was to get all of the movies that had the genre adventure, among whatever other genres they might have, they at least had to have that as one of their genres, and a rating of 7.5 or higher. And we do the same kind of thing with filter and map. Now we have a slightly more complex filter predicate this time. Let's have a look at the code. 
Here we're pulling a row out, and the first thing I want to do is I want to get the set of genres. Now that's a set of strings, so I'm going to say on that first line, does that set contain adventure as one of the strings? And is the rating defined? And is the rating greater than 7.5? So an unrated film or a rating below 7.5, those will not make the cut. Those are not going to be in the RDD returned by that filter transformation. That filter transformation then gets mapped on the fourth line. And again, the map is just formatting the string. It's pulling out those three columns that we care about, concatenating them into a string, returning it, which we then collect and for each and print. And we get a grand total of one film, only one adventure film rated greater than 7.5. And that is Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, incredibly 2003.